I was born a lifetime ago, in July of 1924, in a city called Samara on Volga River in Soviet Union. There was so much despair, hunger, and poverty. After the World War and the Communist Revolution of 1917, my mother died when I was just three years old in childbirth of my younger sister. My older sister, Rachel, was just five, and the baby, Olya, named after our mama, was only two hours old. All I remember about Papa is how, how, how much he suffered. And what I remember about Mama is how she liked drinking her tea, dipping cubes of sugar pieces into the hot water. It's funny how memories work, and we remember the most trivial of things. My two sisters and I were raised in our loving and forever exhausted home where Papa David worked around the clock to feed his three little motherless daughters. I don't remember, of course, but Papa told me that when Mama died, he covered all the windows of the house for the morning week of Shiva. When the week passed and Papa went to the city bathhouse, an old man looked at him and exclaimed, My son, your face is so young, but your hair is completely white. How is it possible? Papa didn't know that he went gray from the shock of losing his wife. He was 26 years old when he was widowed with three of us girls. I remember his hair was always white. How can I explain to you the reality of those days? We lived in a tiny room with all three girls sleeping on top of a big chest that contained all of our belongings. Papa found a thin mattress to put on the chest and made it into our bed. We had one set of sheets and it was time to wash them. We had to take turns watching them dry on a cloth line. One day, when it was my turn, I got distracted by a friend. And when I turned around, I saw gypsies running, running away with all our clothes and sheets. I remember how I was running after them, screaming and begging for help. A policeman heard me and came to my rescue. I didn't have a single thought about my safety. I only thought about the stolen sheets and cloth because there was no way to replace them, you see. This is all I was thinking about, running and crying. This is what people cried about those days. I remember Papa coming home from work late at night, tucking us in bed with fairy tales. We didn't understand that he was working 16-hour shifts in a grocery store to make the ends meet. Papa was falling asleep in every middle of the every fairy tale story from exhaustion and lack of sleep while reliving his work day. Papa would start. The Red Riding Hood went to see her grandmother and the kilo of rice, I think it's two rubles plus the bread, it's three rubles plus nine kopeik, and the three of us would scream, Papa, Papa, what rice? You were telling us about the Red Riding Hood and the grandma. Papa would wake up again and start where he left off. And the wolf said to the red riding hood, my dear child, the flour is three rubles plus a loaf of bread and some potatoes. And the total is we will be holding off our stomach from laughter. Papa is dozing off again, innocently wondering why Papa is falling asleep and interrupting the story. We were three little motherless daughters. How could we understand how much weight Papa had on his shoulders? I remember the little boy sitting on a stoop in a neighborhood. The boy was covered in lice and he was begging for food. I still, I still feel my heart racing as I think of that day. I, I ran inside the house yelling, Papa, Papa, I want to give my bread to the poor child outside. Papa knew I couldn't be stopped despite my own hunger. I snatched a piece of bread and stormed into the street when I walked up to the boy, he grabbed this piece of bread with both hands, stuffing it in his mouth. He was so hungry and weak. I'm reliving this incident again and again for so many years, 65 years. I think of wonder if this boy ever survived. I often dream about this. I dream about this boy. 
I wish, I wish I could have done more for him. Голод это страшно, это очень страшно. Hunger changes you forever. I never throw away food. Food is sacred. Sometimes I bake croutons out of stale bread. I hold them in my mouth for a long time, remembering the feeling of hunger. So like in my childhood, bread swells up and it seems bigger inside. Back then, I could only fool my hunger for a short while. <sighs> I'm glad you don't fully understand this experience. You should never understand. Чтобы вы никогда не знали этого горя. Hunger is a horrible suffering. Typhus. Typhus claimed around 3 million people in 1920s. When I was about seven years old, the pandemic hit close to home. All three of us became ill with this horrible illness. We had a high fever. I remember I felt terribly weak and I had a stomach ache. While my sisters remained conscious, I succumbed to this worst of this disease. Papa paid for a doctor to visit us. This was a complicated and expensive ordeal. The doctor examined each of us separately and told Papa, David, you're a smart man and I will be honest with you. Your oldest, Rachel, and the youngest, Ola, they have a chance to survive. Bring them to the city hospital and pay for them. But the middle one, Zelda, she won't live. Don't waste your money on her. Don't waste your money or time. She has been unconscious for three days. She has no chance to survive. I heard every single word that the doctor said, and I heard Papa reply. I will tell all, I will take all three of them to the hospital. I won't give up until she stops breathing. Oh, I will always remember Papa's answer. When ho the hospital, if you can call it that, it was a big room with hundreds of bed. Papa sat on a chair near me. He dozed off and dreamt of our mama. In his dream, she gave Papa four loaves of challah bread for each of us and said, that Zina, as she called me, needs an extra one to get her strength back. Papa woke up to my voice after three days of being completely unconscious. I woke up and asked for a drink of water. This was a true miracle, a message from the other side. You see, Soviet government prohibited all religious observances, yet no authority had the power to remove faith from the hearts of the people. We knew Mama was there with us in our darkest moments. We knew Mama was there, Mama Snami. As we were a little older, Papa hired an elderly woman to help her around the house, Baba Frosia, <laughs> a peasant. She went to sleep at sunset and woke up with the sound of roosters. Once she woke up and woke me up for school, braided my hair and put a piece of bread inside my school bag. <laughs> I ran towards the school, surprised that it was still dark outside, but I didn't think much of it. When I reached the school building, I realized that something was wrong. I started banging on the locked door. Scared of the dogs barking in the distance, a few minutes later, a night watchman came to the door, surprised to see me. He was woken up by my bangs, and he cursed under his breath. What on earth are you doing here at two in the morning? I started to cry. I was scared to walk back home in the middle of the night, now that I knew that it's night. This kind man allowed me to stay in the classroom. This is how I slept that night, sitting in my chair, laying my head down <sighs> on the desk in front of me. I knew Baba Frosty was old and she didn't know how to tell time. There was no reason. There was no point of being upset with her. These were the things that happened in my childhood. These things would never happen today. During my childhood years, people lived in terror. There were years of Stalin's repressions. People reported neighbors to KGB for no reason, no reason whatsoever. Neighbors were scared to trust each other. Many people disappeared without a trace after being interrogated by the government about their commitment to the Soviet government and communist and propaganda. One evening, Papa came home with big samovar, teapot, that Russians used 
for us to make tea. A neighbor suspected that Papa was hiding something illegal inside of it. He reported Papa to the local authorities, and in the evening, police came and knocked on our door and arrested Papa. Soldiers came, stomping their feet. I still remember that sound of marching, marching feet. It's, it's, a, it's a horrible sound. It's a horrible sound. I remember sitting on the chest bed with my sisters, afraid to move and talk. The terror we felt for those 36 hours while Papa was away cannot be described by words. Papa returned the next evening, badly beaten, broken, and exhausted. There was no evidence found against him. Yet, this was a miracle because many did not come back from these interrogations. And evidence, <laughs> evidence, it wasn't necessarily what decided a person's fate. It wasn't the evidence. I had no real toys growing up. У меня не было игрушек. Not too many children had plastic toys. Dolls or metal cars or toy soldiers, all toys were pretend. We really had an extraordinary imagination. I remember one day, playing outside, a woman approached me asking if I wanted to buy a real doll. She named a high price, but this was my only chance, you see, because there were no toys sold in the store. I was so excited, I ran inside and took the emergency money Papa left for us. Followed the woman walking far into the outskirts of the neighborhood. I remember crossing the ravine and approaching a house with a tall fence. A woman told me to give her the money and wait for her to bring out the doll. I was excited. I waited for a long time. It was getting dark. Then in the distance, I saw this woman open the gate of her fence and sent the dogs out on me. I saw, I saw the big barking dogs moving toward me and started to run, run away screaming. I don't remember how I found my way home. I still remember that day like it was yesterday. I still can't comprehend. How could a woman, maybe a mother, someone's mother, trick a little child this way? How can anyone be so cruel? This I will never understand. Kaka namagla. Kaka namagla. We made our own dolls out of old rags and carried them around as if they were real babies. I drew a face on an old piece of cloth, stuffed it with grass, and made it into my daughter. <laughs> there was a neighbor girl named Olya, who had a father and a mother, a father and a mother. They were a real family. When we were about seven or eight, this girl's parents bought her a real doll. She had arms and legs and even hair. It was made out of plastic. It had beautiful, beautiful, beautiful eyes. Olya always carried it with her, making sure that everybody knew that she had a real doll. She kept on walking by our house, showing off the doll. I pretended not to pay attention, as if I didn't care. Of course I cared. But I just didn't want her to know how much I wished that I had a family like hers. She must have been very annoyed that I was ignoring her, and so she ran up to me in a teasing voice and said, Your doll is not real. I wasn't going to take her insults, so I responded, And yours isn't real either. It's not a real baby. It's plastic. At the plastic. She became very mad and put my, pulled my handmade doll from my hands. It ripped open, and the grass fell to the ground. She kept screaming, it's not real! It's not real! Well, I knew how to stand up for myself. I didn't have a mother to save me. My father always busy. So I had to fend for myself. I grabbed the toy from her hand and yelled, This is fake! It's plastic! And yanked the hands off the doll. Her parents, oy, 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 her parents came over to talk to my father about the incident and that I broke the doll and pulled the hands off the doll. Oy, 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 I destroyed the property. I can't believe how daring I was. First, they were really angry and demanded that Papa pays for the damage I caused. 
then they saw Papa's exhaustion and his reluctance to argue. I was, I was his daughter and he was alone raising three children without a wife to lean on. I think they realized that Papa had no energy to fight with them. They were good people and told him not to worry. A few days later, a few days later, they returned with a little toy for me. They were good, good people. Years later, that girl, Ola, and I ended up in the same medical school class during the World War II. I was embarrassed for what I did, and she was too. We laughed about it. Somehow that incident from long ago seemed so trivial and unimportant. Ole and I fought side by side to save people's lives during the war. We had to heal real arms and legs, not the plastic ones. I will always remember her parents as generous and kind people. <sighs> when they brought a little girl gift for me that day, they taught me even a bigger lesson. If they were to scream and demand payment, I realized then there's no point of being bitter. It wasn't really anyone's fault that some people had a family and two loving parents, a mother and a father, and toys, and some didn't. That's just the way life is. We don't understand God's ways. We just need to make the best of what we have and go through life with dignity without becoming bitter or angry. Takava жизнь, мои дети. This is just the way life is, my dear children.